A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Peter began to say to Jesus, We have given up everything and followed you. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you. There is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. But many that are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> so we have to start today's comments with a quiz. And the quiz is, do you remember yesterday's Gospel? Because really, this Gospel belongs with yesterday's gospel. I'm not sure why they cut it off and made it, put it on a separate day. But yesterday's gospel was the rich young man runs up to Jesus, kneels before him and says, what must I do to enter eternal life? And Jesus says, what we all know, what's written into our soul by the natural law, keep the commandments, don't commit adultery, don't lie, don't defraud, honor your father and mother. What more must I do? Sell your belongings, give it to the poor, come follow me. And then he goes away sad. But who's standing right there? Peter's standing right there and he says, what about us? Because basically Jesus finished the conversation with the rich young man or with the apostles saying how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It's impossible for a rich person to enter the kingdom. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, is what he says. And then Peter is there and he says, what about us? Can we be saved? And that's today's gospel. Can we be saved? We have given up everything and followed you. And then Jesus says, you know, if you give up anything for my sake, I'm going to give you a hundred times more. I was reflecting on this this morning and, and I was thinking to myself, have I ever really, truly, completely and utterly, selflessly given anything? Or am I always thinking a little bit about myself? What's in it for me, Peter says. What's in it for me? And so aren't we striving to find that place in our soul where we can actually give for the glory of God and for no other reason? Not asking what's in it for me. And if we can find that place someday where we can give, we're going to get a hundred times more. It will be as if we can't get rid of it fast enough. We give to God and God gives to us. Jesus is telling us, you can't outgive me. But when you give, oh, by the way, there will be persecution too. It's a really a powerful and paradoxical gospel. Give and you will receive and you'll be persecuted. And so the gospel of the rich young man who went away from Jesus sad in the gospel of Peter, who says, we've given it up for you. If you give anything up for me, you're going to get a hundred times more and persecutions to boot. So we're thinking about what we're giving up for Lent, right? 
And let's pray today that whatever it is that we choose to give up for Lent, whatever it is that we choose, whatever disciplines that we invoke, embrace, I should say, whatever they are, for that purity of intention, that we really could give it for the glory of God and not saying, what's in it for me? How much weight will I lose? What's in it for me? If we could just give and we will find that God is a generous giver and oh, with persecutions to boot. So we pray today, not to be like the rich young man, to be more like Peter was, but even to be purified of our intention, to be able to give to the giver that we may have more to give and sustain ourselves in our persecutions as well.